So hang in there, keep watching these videos. I'm going to do my best to show you as many memorization techniques uh, or understandings as possible in order to remember this very much a memorization unit. These are the objectives for 10.2. Going over the writing conventions, the single arrow represents just a single electron that's being transferred. So you can see here and here we have just the single electrons. The double arrow means that both electrons have moved. Now always draw the movement of electrons. Don't draw the movement of positive, move, uh, draw the movement of the negative electrons. This here does not represent an electron. This big dot here represents a radical. It actually looks like this, which just means the valence shell isn't full. This is a revision from topic two, so be aware of that as the complex. That's the charge of the complex, and these are the ligands. And lastly, these dashed lines mean it's not a complete bond, but there is a shared bond, they're delocalized electrons. This is better actually written like this. It means it's going out into the page. This one's coming out towards you, so it's a much clearer, thicker line. This will help you give better 3D diagrams. Alkane reactions now. Just some terminology. Catenation means that an element can form bonds with itself. This is very important in organic chemistry because the carbon and the carbon-hydrogen bonds are very stable. They're non-polar and they don't react. So this gives us the strong stable base with which to form all our compounds. We will revert to, refer to the data booklet later, but this is giving this will give you very confident information here about uh, the results. So you can see the stability of the molecule there. It takes 348 kilojoules per mole to break it, which shows you how stable the carbon-carbon bond. If we look at the carbon-hydrogen bond here, that's also very high, 414. So it's important to go back to your topic two and talk about the orbitals. So there's large, these large atoms have shielding. So they, the positive nuclear charge hasn't, doesn't have a good ability to attract itself to the, the bonding electrons here. That's why this silicon has a much weaker bond enthalpy. Combustion and incomplete combustion. Hopefully this is revision from before IB. Complete combustion is CO2 and incomplete combustion is carbon monoxide which will bind much more strongly than O2 to your haemoglobin and so cause poisoning. More terminology. Heterolytic means it's uneven so that sort of splitting will cause one to be positive here and one to be negative. Homolytic splitting causes these dots here which means that they are radicals and they have a sh an equal breakage here at the double bond. Moving on to some alkane reactions now. Take special note of these red notes up here. This means that you must know the mechanism. So when you see these drawings, see, you must be able to draw that. So that's the half one, the half arrow here. So UV has come in and broken these bonds. And you can see this is chlorine here. If you can look that up in your data booklet, that's a much weaker. So if UV attacks a molecule, it's going to break off the chlorine because it's got the weakest bond enthalpy. And so you can draw it like this, and that's homolytic fission. So when you're drawing these mechanisms, you also need to know this terminology. Initiation creates the radical. Propagation means that there is still a radical created here, so that there will be more reactions. And termination means the radicals have disappeared. Now, the radicals themselves are broken by UV light in this particular instance and the reason that they don't react with each other and go back to being how they were is because they're in a solution or an environment where there's heaps and heaps of these things so it's just reaction kinetics the chances are this thing when it's created is the next thing it's going to bump into is something else and not itself the second thing here is you can basically draw because these are unstable they don't have full valence shell electrons they will pretty much react with anything. So you could come up with some more ideas here about other things that will react with anything it comes in contact with. So that it will help you sort of work out, well, I don't have to draw it like this. I could draw something else. As long as it hits, whatever it hits with, it will react with. Now to terminate, just grab two, two radicals and give them full electron shells. 
and that finishes it off. In reality you're going to get all of these. Organic chemistry is a mess. That's why we have so many separation techniques. So again the mechanism is to be known here. The bond is only going to break with UV light. Once you get these radicals uh, that can then react with this uh, methane molecule here and so you draw the electrons here and you draw a line going here to make the attack. All right, so that's bromo. So you will see the bromine here. The bromine is brown with UV light that will then go colorless. Alkene reactions now. Okay, you can see here that the double bonds are not as stable as the single bonds. So the single bond is 348 and the double bond is 6112. So if you divide that by 2, you get 306. So per per bonding pair it's weaker. I think the main thing is there's a high degree of electronegativity here so if there's lots of negatives here it's going to be very easy for something positive to come in uh, and do something there. And so with any of these reactions all you're doing, you don't have to know the mechanism here but all you're doing is you're breaking these bonds here and so you're uh, taking an electron over here and one over here and some other electrons forming from some other thing uh, so in this case it's hydrogen so you break those form radicals and that's where you get the new bonds from memorization nickel catalyst 150 degrees alright so you need to probably do a list of things that you can't work out uh, and work out ways to memorize that I don't have a way to memorize that one I'm afraid uh, it usually makes sense for heat to help reactions usually uh, and some sort of catalyst again you can see you just always just break off the double bond and that's how you get your product. Now alkenes do the same as alkanes except for you don't need UV light so if you mix some bromine water which is brown and it probably goes off really quickly if you've done this in the, in the classroom so I don't know if it's worked if your bromine's gone off and it will go it will go colorless. Uh, the alkane itself will also do this if you have UV light remember. So here is a suggested mechanism for how it works uh, both electrons moving over here to all right, that's making this positive which will be attracted to these electro dense region and that will form a bond there and then this will be a, a sort of positive charge here to form this reaction again the addition of water so you can H2O you can put the the H on one side the OH on the other this one's a rather cruel one if they ask you for the mechanism which they haven't said in the syllabus but this is how the mechanism is suggested. So concentrated H2SO4 on heat. If you're in trouble and you can't guess what the catalyst is, go for H2SO4 because it's the king of chemicals and needed for so many organic reactions. Lastly, polymerization. This is just it reacting with itself. So this is the monomer here, the polymer here. So know how to do the brackets with the N there. Again, I'm assuming this is revision. Uh, so one goes over here, one goes over here, and it joins with itself. That's an addition polymerization. So in summary, here we have these here. What I suggest is you look at this and try and memorize it, cover it up, and then draw it. And you need to draw everything perfectly, so you need to pay attention to the reaction conditions here and the products. And if you get one wrong, have a look what the answer is. Get a new piece of paper, cover it up, and write it again. Moving to alcohol reactions now. Again, this is a combustion that we've covered in the past. This one here is complete combustion. And you can see that the more carbon atoms there are, more carbon bonds there are, of course, there's more energy stored in the molecule. The question is, per carbon, is that the most efficient? So what you'd need to do is divide these numbers by this by 8, and this by 7, this by 6, and then have a comparison to see which one's the most efficient. Moving on to the oxidation of alcohols. Now what I do is, you can see here with the tertiary alcohol, you just need to realize that there's no way for this to be to have access to this because it's blocked off steric hindrance. So it's very difficult for that to form anything else that's more oxidized. You can't form a double bond there uh, and you can't, you can't break the carbon-carbon bonds. It's too strong so you can't do oxidation that way. So there's five bonds here so that doesn't work. So what I do is I grab the molecule, say this one here, 
and I think what other ways can I add more oxygens without destroying it and so I can see I could get rid of this here all right I could add oxygens here and the reason we don't add an extra oxygen on top of there uh, is because that would then break that would then have five bonds so we're not left with many options we're left with a double bond O uh, and then so that gives us an aldehyde and the carboxylic acid has slightly more oxygen in there so you, that's how you know the carboxylic acid comes second this one here is the ketone and then we run out of bonds if you look at the bonding involved here this is dipole and so that will have weaker bonding then here we have a dipole as well and we have hydrogen bonding here so this will have the weaker melting point so if you're making this this compound here this one's going to come off first and it's going to evaporate and you're not going to get any of this so what you do is you have this inside a reflux uh, so if you just want everything to an aldehyde here 23 degrees celsius as opposed to the hydrogen bonding here uh, as ethanoic acid so if you just want that then you can just let it all evaporate off and do distillation so it'll just come off here but if you want it to get, get further oxidized what you have to do is invert it here which is a reflux let it cool and drop back down and then further react to get more oxidized now you have to know the names of the oxidization uh, reagents so here these things get reduced uh, so this is the memorization bit here so orange to green, 6 to 3. Again, I don't know a trick for remembering those, so put that in your memorization ones, those ones there. Condensation reactions now. Now we've covered these a bit now, so any sort of more small molecule that comes off is a condensation. It condensates, gets rid of a small product. So a carboxylic and a alcohol, can you, which one of those three can you get? Uh, and you can see that that one uh, is really the only option. There's no nitrogen and there's no chlorine. So you join those two. Concentrated sulfuric acid, generally if you can't remember what the conditions are. And so that's an esterification reaction. That's forming an ester. Halogenic alkane reactions now. Terminology, nucleophile. That means it loves positive. That might, must mean itself is negative. Compare that to an electrophile. That would be negative. Uh, that would love negative, so itself it would be positive. So a nucleophile is something that's negative, so that would be something like OH minus. It's negative. It's going to attack a, a positive uh, carbon most likely. Uh, the electrophile it's positive, so it loves something negative. So that uh, proton would be an electrophile. So just for standard level, you're going to have to learn these reactions. I think it would be helpful to look at the high level SN1, SN2. How do you know it's OH minus? How do you know it's X? Uh, just as a pre preemptive on that, have a look at the the carbon oxygen bond and the carbon halogen bond. If you can't remember which one it is that's doing the substitution, if you look at your data booklet, you can see here that the carbon oxygen bond is 358. It's quite strong. Whereas if you look at your halogens, 324, 285. Uh, 228 uh, not including fluorine they're much weaker so that's how I know which one's going to do which if I've forgotten which one is it going to be uh, OH or, or a halogen that comes in that's going to do the substitution so apart from that it's just a simple swap over which is what the word substitution means benzene reactions now now specifically they've told you don't need to memorize anything here just grab, uh, uh, just know that the electrophile is going to come in and replace the H+. So here we have some examples, just grabbing the electrophile here. Now this doesn't look like an electrophile, but if you're getting H2 coming off, so the O2- is joined with the H pluses here. Uh, if you remove an O2- minus from that, that becomes positive in a more complex mechanism. Same with this, HCl. If you're removing a Cl negative from there, that would be heteroelectric fission, so that would create uh, in the more complex mechanism somewhere, uh, this will have a, a positive charge when it attacks the benzene.